singly linked list is created by linking nodes together using their next property. Singly linked lists are incredibly adaptable and functional, as well as being aesthetically pleasing. These lists, like nodes, serve as the foundation for future data structures and are an alternative to arrays when storing information in a linear fashion. So let's draw out the singly linked list. So we know about arrays that store data at contiguous locations and contiguous meaning that they're touching borders. So we have data like this and this suppose that this is some data, let's say three, this is some data as two, this is some data as five, and there is four over here and then there's one. Now the total amount of data here is five. The size is five, but the length is from zero, one, two, three, four. And if we want to access any one of them, we could just use the index. So for instance, we could say the array name subscript two will get the fifth one. In a linked list, data is stored in nodes and each node is linked to the next. So if we look at the structure here, we have a node here. And then we have this pointer which points to the next one. And then we have another pointer which points to the next one. This is how we keep track of the locations because these nodes are scattered out throughout the memory. But this is a complete structure of a singly linked list. Now each node in a linked list contains the following parts. It contains a data, it contains a pointer or reference to the next node, and it could also contain a pointer to the previous node. So that's an ex exceptional case and we'll discuss about this in future. Now let's map out this thing inside of our program. Here I have two files. One we had the node.java file which we already created in the last video and we're going to use this file and we're going to use the class to create our linked list because we know that linked lists are composed of nodes so we're going to use the nodes to create our linked list. To get started we're going to have to type in the public class linked list and inside of this we're going to create the constructor and all the fun stuff. Linked list is composed of nodes and the first node will always be the one that we would start with and we could uh, reference that as the head node. So we could call that as the head node and we we'll just point to the first node. And if it's empty, if a linked list is empty, we could just assign the head as null. So it would just be null like that in empty cases. But in cases what there, there is some nodes, we'll point the head as the first node. So over here, we have to create a instance variable called head. So we could call this using the public node and we could say head. We're done with that. And now we're going straight on the bottom here to the constructor. We'll say public link list and inside of this, we're not going to pass anything. And we're going to assign that head to a null. So we could say this dot head and equals to a null. We want to add some functionality to our link list. We want to add stuff that we could do. Like for instance, we want to add stuff to the head. We want to add stuff to the tail of the link list and all of that's awesome stuff. But before that, we have to go back to the diagram and see that the head is over here at the first location. The tail would be at the ending location here. So this is the tail of the link list and this is the head of the link list. And we usually start, mostly start from the head. So we want to add stuff to the head, meaning we want to st add stuff before the head of the link list. We want to add stuff after the tail of the link list and all that's awesome stuff. We want to remove stuff from the head and we want to add these functionalities the add to head method. So we're going to see public, we're going to say void, add, add to head. And if we want to add to head, we have to pass in some data. So we're going to use the string data here, which we're going to use to pass into the head. We're going to add a head with some data. So we need that. So we create an instance of the node for with our data, which was passed in the input parameter. To do this, it's simply node new node. We're using the old class over there and we want the node. So we could say like that. And they're just asking for a data, which we passed in like that. And we're done with this. So we created our new node instance and we passed in our data. So this is created. Now all we're going to do is we're going to have the current node reference to so we get a current node is equal to this dot head because it's pointing to the first node so we'll use that as our reference here. So
So the current node is there. And we want to add this to our existing head, this dot head. And we assign that to our new node because we want to replace the old one. If the current node was null, it wouldn't be a big issue. But if it wasn't null, meaning if there was some data inside of it, we'd have to add, put the next node as the current node. So it would make sense when I type this in. So if I said, if the current node not equal to null, then we'd have the head, which is this dot head dot set next node. And we put the current node, current node here. And now we have this chain properly set. We'd have this dot head dot set next node and then the current node passed inside. So that's our method here about which is used to add to head. Similar to this, this is the add to tail method and it's just a mirror to the first function. So we could do following, we could do public void add to tail and what we would do is that we still pass in a string to add in and there's a little bit of difference and that's just a tiny amount. First we'd have to point, we'd create a um, node which is assigned to the tail. We could say we could assign that to the first node in this existing in our linked list which is this dot head. So we assign the tail and the head to our first node. We could say this is our head node, right? But if we're talking about the tail, because we have to include that as well, this is also the tail as well. So it's not only the head, but it's also the tail. So we could say this is the head and the tail. So that's what we did over there in the program. What we did is node tail is equal to this dot head. So now if the case, if the tail is equal to null, if the tail is equal to null and we want to add to tail, what we're going to do is we're going to set the next one. So we're going to say, because we assigned the this dot head to it, we could say this dot head, go to new node, and we pass in the data here. And we can say data. And this would uh, make our new tail if it was null. Else, if, if the tail did exist something, so if there was some data inside of it, we'd go while, and inside the while loop, we'd have tail dot get next node. And if that next node was not equal to null, So what we'd have is that the tail is equal to tail dot get next node. So this is how it's traversing. It's gonna go throughout the whole link list structure until it finds the last tail element or the last node. And once it does, so it will just exit out the while loop and then we'll add in the last one using tail and then we're gonna do dot set next node once we reach the last element where the next one would be null, we would say it's set next node and we pass in the data which was passed in earlier. So we have to pass in a node. So we could say something like new node and would pass in the data here. And that's our solution here. So this is how the process would work if we wanna add to tail. So we usually have a linked list just like this and we'll have the head and tail assigned to the first one. Like over here would have the tail as well as the first node during the add to tail process. But once after this, the tail would move incrementally because of the while loop and it would go until it finds the last node. And once it finds the last node, for instance, this is null and then the tail finds this portion. So we'll have to add the element after the last element, which was passed through the input parameter and the tail would move out as well. So it would just go from here to null and then it would have the element we passed in through the input parameter. And then that would be our new tail. And then the next after this would be a null. So it's just a process which is really cool and really neat. To remove the head of a node, what we'd do is the following. We'd have a public and I want the head's uh, value so I would have the string 
and I would say remove head. And what we'd do here is that we would go inside of our method and would say the following. We'd say node removed head and would get the original head, which is this dot head. And we want to remove this, right? So one way is that we could uh, remove the linkage and the following could be implemented. So if removed head is already null, so we could have to uh, follow these cases as well. If it's already null, what we would do is we would just simply return null because we have no other thing here. But if the removed head uh, does contain some value, we want to remove it. So we could do this dot head and we could assign it to the removed heads next element, which was removed head dot get next node. So get next node. And now the new head will be assigned to the next node after the first one. And we would finally return the removed heads data. So we could say removed head dot data. But uh, it was removed head here. So that's it. And then we'd have a semicolon at the end. And our problem is solved. This is how we remove a head pool. Now the final method that we need before we conclude is the print method to see how our linked list looks like. So we could say public and it's, it's going to be a string. So string and we're going to say print and we're not going to pass in anything. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say the string output of our structure would first contain just the head. So we could just pass in the head like this and a semicolon here. And what we want to do after this is we would have the elements added to this string incrementally. For that, we'd have to use a while loop as well. But first, we'd have to check the current node. So the current node would be the first one. It would say this dot head. And then we'll use a while loop, which will say the current node current node not equal to null. And then we'll just keep on going. So the output plus equal to current node dot data and then the space just for some good output. So it would be organized with a space. And then we could also change our current node to the next node using the con traditional current node dot get next node method, which we've created in our node class. So once we do this, once we exit out our while loop, we'll have the following output, you know, the ending portion would be just incrementing it to the tail string. So we just have to locate that the final word would be the tail. So we'd say tail like that and a semicolon at the end. But once we add the tail at the end, we go to use system.out.println to put pass in the output just to see that in our console screen. And then we could return it using the output, which is like this. And we're done with this print method. And over here, we'd have to experiment on our linked list. So if I create a linked list like linked list, and I say L1, and I say new linked list, this would just contain a head that would be pointing to null. So for that, I would actually need some nodes. To create nodes, I could use my previous class, which was over here, node.java. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to instantiate some. It's publicly accessible throughout my directory, so I could use it anywhere I want in, within the directory. So I could say node n1, and I could say new node, and I could add in some data here. So let's say please over here. And then we could add in another node here. We'll say node n2. I would say new node and would we'll add another data here. Just creating two instances. And I'll say, let's say subscribe. And those of you who aren't subscribed should subscribe. And uh, n1 and n2 would be just these nodes. And if we want to link them or we want to add them to the link list, we would just say l1 dot add to head or add to tail. So we say add to head and would put the N1 here. So that 
made our first one added. Why do we have this? It says the method adds head in the type link list is not applicable for the art for the argument node. That's because um, we we actually need a string for our add to head method. If we go back up here, it actually needs a string. To do that, we'd have to just say a dot and then we'd say the data. Just want the data inside and we're done with that. Perfect. And if we want the next one, we say l1, which is the link list dot add to head and we'll just say n2 dot data. And we added our two uh, nodes inside of our link list. We could also uh, remove the head. We could also print them out. So first let's print them out. So I'll just say print. And this is going to be really cool because first let's see what's going to happen. We have the first one, which is please. So please will be added to our link list like this. And we'd have, we already know what we have is a head and a tail. So this is both. And then we'd have add to head. So we want something earlier than please. So, we'd have, so it would be first, then it would just replace the existing please as the first to subscribe and then the next one would be just after it. So subscribe please. We have this extra thing over here we don't need. So just remove that and I think we're good to go. If I say Java C and I say link list dot Java. So what happens is that the Java source code is compiled into bytecode using the Java C compiler. And then the bytecode gets saved on the disk with the file extension dot class. Now, if I go and press enter here, you'd see there are class files here. Not one, but two, because we use both of them. We'd use node and we use link list. Even though we just tie, uh, we just compiled our link list, we, com we actually compiled both of our node and link list and they convert it into bytecode. So both of them dot class dot class, they're saved into my disk. Now, what I wanna do now is that when the program is to be run, the bytecode is converted. Uh, and it's converted when we, when we want to execute it. So let's say we want to say Java link list, just like that. The bytecode is converted using the just-in-time compiler. And the result is machine code, which is then fed to the memory and it is executed. So that's the process of how this works. Java code needs to be compiled twice in order to be executed, unlike C++, which has a different process and C. So here we got running and look over here. So we have a head which was the first portion what we thought and then after that subscribe and then please and then tail yeah so definitely subscribe <laughs>